This week, we've got a couple exciting announcements, a couple exciting updates, as well as a brand new mobile app update that you are not going to want to miss. Stay tuned for this week's weekly breakdown coming right up. What's up, guys? It's Michael McAllister with Empower LO. This week, starting out, we've got some new updates to calendar function. Um, so if you didn't know, then you've been sleeping. Uh, calendars are built in. Calendars, appointment scheduling calendars are built into your high-level account. If you're using uh, Calendly right now, it is a waste of time, a waste of energy, a waste of money. Switch over, use the ones inside of high level. Um, the update that just came out is a really cool one. For those of you guys that are running classes, um, if you didn't know, you can set up your calendars as a means of managing registrations for your classes. Now, that hasn't always been the cleanest experience. We've done it before. We've got personal experience with this. Um, however, they did just make a huge move to make it a lot cleaner. So for those of you guys that are considering running classes or do run classes, check this out. So in here, you have the ability to set date specific hours. So rather than saying that you're available and creating consistent availability throughout the week, you say, for example, I'm running a class. I'm only running a class in two sessions. I'm running it on September 25th. I'm running it on October 8th. These are the hours that I'm running it in. Well, before, if you were to go to the calendar link, then depending on when those were booked, you would have to, you might have to scroll a little bit to find the actual event. Like you actually had to, had to search for the day where the availability was not blocked out and then pick that kind of a pain in the butt, not a clean solution. Uh, we ended up having people that used a high level for events or use high level for events. We ended up having them switch to just a form, a basic form where they pick one of two options, which is not as clean as it can be. Uh, and so the fact that they fixed this is pretty cool. Now, if you go in here, I'll go into the scheduling link, then it should immediately pull me in right to this. Now I messed up. I set this class at 30 minute intervals. So it looks like there's four different classes. I should have set this up at only two hour, like the length is two hours and then this would look better. Um, so that's my fault, but it did pull us directly to there. Cool update there as far as the calendar functionality goes. A um, couple other small updates, custom value support. So when you're actually creating the calendars, right? So if you come in here and you're actually creating them, uh, you have more support for being able to add custom values or custom fields into here, uh, including being able to select anything that you want to, as opposed to having to copy and paste the actual code in here. So this is a cool update as well. Um, again, just a couple minor updates to calendars, making it better every single day. Let us know if you have any questions. Next up, we have an update to the remove from workflow functionality. Uh, I can't, dude, I use that word way too much, functionality. The remove from workflow action inside of workflow. So if I go into here, I have my actions and let's see, I want to add a remove from workflow step. Whereas before it was either current workflow, I think maybe all workflows and then specify a workflow. Now you can say all workflows except the current workflow, which is super, super handy. And then check this out. Another thing too, when I say, when I specify another workflow, I can actually specify and select as many of these as I want. Whereas before you had to set up one of these for each workflow you wanted to remove them from super messy. It just didn't end up getting used properly. So now this remove from workflow step is a lot cleaner. Uh, check it out. If you have any use cases for it, you probably do um, and, and probably have somewhere where you've set up three or four different actions that you can consolidate with this. So check it out. All right, next up is an update to conversation AI, specifically the appointment booking uh, functionality. Again, I don't, dude, I gotta find some synonyms or something, pull, pull out the thesaurus. Uh, but the appoint, uh, specifically the appointment booking functionality of conversation AI, uh, you now have the ability to pause bot responses after booking. So basically snooze the bot or trigger a workflow after a, an appointment is booked. So just a couple things, if you're using this appointment booking intent, you now have a little bit cleaner way of creating automations on the back end. Um, you typically, if you didn't, weren't using this, then you would create a trigger of a, uh, in a workflow that says appointment booked. Well, the problem is, is if you do that, then it, it's not necessarily going to identify when the bot booked the appointment. So you might not want the same automations to take place for when a bot books an appointment versus when a customer books an appointment directly or when you book an appointment with that customer. So that's the use case of this. If you're using conversation AI and having success with it, we would love to hear, uh, hear from you. We are using closed bot right now is what we're using in our, uh, development of, of our consumer direct bot. Um, so if you have any questions on that or have any experience with that, we'd love to hear from you.
Um, otherwise, check this out and let us know how it's going because we don't have as much personal experience with it as we'd like to. All right, next up, you now have the ability to upload CSV files inside your media library. Media libraries are also able to be pushed from account to account with snapshots. And so this means uh, CSV files, things like, uh, you know, calculators that you have or specific tools that you have uh, that you have built into a spreadsheet if you are a branch manager a broker owner if you want to be able to push these to your LO's account you can now load these CSV files directly into the media storage area push it out through a snapshot boom now all your LO's uh, have access to those CSV files so uh, kind of like a share drive basically right only people get their own access to things instead of having access to a centralized source where they can mess mess up those documents so uh, this is just a really cool functionality that's going to make it easier and easier for loan officers uh, and specifically leaders that are trying to uh, streamline the, the communication of information the sharing of documents files marketing materials etc trying to streamline the sharing of that between them and their LOs if you're using high level being able to push this through a snapshot is really really cool all right and last up I do not have uh, my phone pulled up for you guys today um, but you now uh, to be able to show you this actual update I don't think in the the interface itself that you're gonna see a lot of changes but some really cool uh, abilities that are now added uh, you have the ability this transfer to staff one right if I so you guys probably aren't reading this so I probably shouldn't assume that you are um, but new mobile app version go in make sure you install it uh, j just check the App Store check the Play Store make sure you have the most up-to-date version um, you now can answer and make calls from your watch, right? If you have a Wear OS watch, which I believe, believe is like the Android watch platform. Um, so you now have the ability to uh, receive calls and directly and hang up direct, or is that Apple? I don't know, honestly. Uh, either way, you have the ability to hang up and uh, receive calls. If you know which one that is, let me know. Um, Bluetooth control on Android, specifically in Android Auto. There were some disconnect issues there that are fixed. Um, you have the ability to transfer calls to staff that are in like that are in your account um, or transfer to any contact. So check this out. If you're on a phone call, you now will have the ability on screen to transfer that call to anybody that's in your contacts in that sub account or any of your staff members in that sub account. And it'll just ring directly to them, give them the option to connect the call and connect it. Really, really cool uh, abilities from the mobile app. So we expect to see this being used pretty heavily. I would expect this to be a more impactful mobile app update than we've seen in the past. Um, let us know if you see any bugs or errors from this. We want to get them fixed as soon as possible, get that feedback over the high level. So we've got the cleanest experience possible. So um, yes, that is the mobile app update. Make sure you download it. Let us know if you have any questions. All right, guys, that is it for this week's weekly breakdown. Don't forget to download or do install uh, the app update in the app store or the Google Play Store. Uh, don't forget to check out that transfer call function that I announced at the uh, that I announced at the end there with the mobile app update. Uh, check out those new calendar functions. Let us know if you have anything that we missed uh, that you have questions about. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for next next week's weekly breakdown. But until then, we'll see you at the top.